Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I would like to welcome you to Oracle Groundbreaker Yatra 2020. It's an online webinar series. This is one of the largest Oracle user group webinar series. We are covering 125 plus sessions, uh, hours of learning sessions in 14 days and 100 plus speakers, including Oracle Ace and Java champions. As many of you are probably aware, usually every year we are having a Yatra in-person event, but this year due to a global scenario, we have gone through the online. Today is a third day and every day we are covering a eight session starting from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. This one is the fifth session of today's. Just to uh, introduce about the AIOG, it has been 13 years now AIOG is serving Oracle community in India. AIOG is now spread in 10 major cities in India. We run dedicated monthly meetups in each chapter. But this year, due to COVID-19, we are running common webinar for all, and it's also a global for now. I would suggest be a part of AIOG community and learn new stuff, update yourself, and build your network with peers. And this will really help you in your career. I will hold this slide for a few seconds, take a print screen snippet of this image and share in your social media and spread a word about that you are attending an amazing webinar series ever. We have a great speaker, Graham Smith. Graham Smith leads a People's of Technology practice and he is a, a Oracle S director. He is highly experienced People's of Specialist, Software Engineer, uh, and Cloud Infrastructure Analyst and Community Activities. So now handing over to Graham. Graham, you can uh, share your screen and start your session. Great, well, good afternoon, everyone. And it's uh, my great uh, privilege and honor to be uh, addressing you this afternoon as part of the Oracle Groundbreakers Yatra Conference. Um, I'm speaking to you live from a very cloudy, but warm and pleasant uh, after early afternoon here in Oxford in England. Uh, I wish I was in India. Um, I have really enjoyed attending uh, in India, uh, AUG events um, run by uh, the user group uh, in Sangam. Um, and uh, I would love to be there with you in, in person, but uh, it's not to be this time round. Um, today, we're talking about PeopleSoft on Oracle Cloud Infrastructure and is it better? Uh, we'll find out my perspective on this over the next 45 minutes. I hope you have opportunity for questions as well. Hoping you can all hear me um, broadcasting my uh, video as well so you can see me. Um, you can, I think, probably opt not to see me if you want um, sporting my great lockdown hair at the moment, um, especially uncut for this session. My name is Graham Smith. As I've been introduced already, I head up the PeopleSoft technology practice at Cedar Consulting, part of the version one group. Um, I, I blog, blog as often as I can, and um, that picture there is my home city, Oxford, uh, where, where I, I currently live um, and work from at the moment. The company I work for, version one, are, are specialist um, cloud and service providers. And uh, we've been working on cloud migration since 2011. We have over 100 of our customers running their core business systems. Uh, that's eBusiness Suite, JD Edwards, and PeopleSoft um, in the cloud, uh, managing their, their systems and helping them optimize them too. Uh, we're a specialist PeopleSoft practice. Uh, we have operations here in the UK uh, and in uh, Pune, actually, uh, in India. So let's begin. I'd like to take us um, back in time, a trip down memory lane to try and answer some questions. Is it better and is it cheaper? 
This is a photograph of a, a water wheel um, uh, generating power for a flour mill up in the northwest of England in the beautiful countryside of Cumbria uh, in es a little town, a village called Eskdale. Uh, it's still operational. It's a, it's a working museum now and maybe in some parts of the world they still generate power like this. But you know, most of us, most of us uh, in the world just flick the switch and turn the power on. Power is a commodity. Um, I don't know if anyone on the uh, webinar today is uh, old enough to remember a car that used to start like this. I don't, but my father does and my grandfather does. Um, it's funny, we used to get out the car and turn the handle at the front and start it and time moves on and guess what? Some cars, you just push a button and uh, the thing starts up. Um, now I do remember televisions like this, uh, televisions with dials and buttons you push to change the channel and adjust the volumes. Uh, but guess what? Most of us now with a TV uh, control the television using a handset. Technology moves on. Um, some would argue it gets better. Some would argue maybe it doesn't. I believe, I'm not an expert in this, but I believe if you take the batteries out your remote control and you get up out your couch to change the TV channel, you can lose several pounds of weight in a year. Anyway, I'm not an expert, I just hear that. Uh, here's another trip down memory lane. This is actually a photograph of me uh, in 1986. That's uh, somewhat over 30 odd years ago. Uh, I just, I can actually prove that it really is me as well. Slightly darker hair back then, but look, I still have the tie that I was wearing uh, back then. This is uh, my Scottish heritage, uh, Graham Tartan. Um, this is me in an office of a company I was working for. You might spot a HP 3000 MPE manual sitting on the, uh, uh, one of the original Hewlett Packard uh, MS-DOS machines. They weren't even running Windows in those days. And just, just behind my shoulder there, you might see the 1200 board Raycal Milgo modem that we used for communications. Uh, we, we thought it was amazing when we got to 2400 board, but uh, time moves on and we move on. This is me today, photograph taken um, at, at uh, one of, I think at Open World last year actually. Um, that's actually not what I look like right now. As you can see, I, my hair is slightly longer. Um, hairdressing and barbershops open in the UK for business uh, this weekend, I think. So maybe it would go time for a haircut. <laughs> Things move on. J uh, just behind my, uh, my back there uh, is our machine room in this company I used to work for. And this is the machine room here. And what I wanted to highlight here was sitting in the corner of the machine room on the right there, you can see in the picture highlighted HP 7978B magnetic reel-to-reel -reel disc uh, a tape drive. We use this for backups. I dug out from the internet uh, an original Hewlett Packard um, uh, brochure pr promoting the amazing technology embedded within this tape drive. And the headline was, you know, what if you could travel the same road faster and as an old fashioned Victorian penny farthing bicycle and a modern uh, touring uh, bicycle, obviously, which goes faster because it has gears. And the claim that, you know, do you want your backups to go in one hour or do you want them to go in six hours? You know, you choose our tape drive and you can do it in one hour. Uh, the brochure says that um, these magnetic tape subsystems uh, are designed for large systems with greater than 400 megabytes of storage. Back in those days, 400 megabytes of storage was a lot of data. And I was a shift operator. I was a, a computer operator. I managed a team of operators uh, and programmers. And we would run a night shift uh, doing uh, backups on our reel-to-reel -reel tape drives. I have a video here of a recording I took just a few days ago using Oracle Cloud Infrastructure to back up a storage volume that is a very similar size. This vo storage volume is 100 gigabytes in storage. Now we didn't have that kind of uh, storage to back up back in those days. Our database is running on, on Hewlett Packard 3000 MPE systems. They were um, somewhere, somewhere in the order of 600 megabytes and it would take us all night to back these up on tape drives. Here, you can see um, a live recording. I've got a little timer in the top right-hand corner there, which I've, I've accelerated time here. 
hours, minutes, seconds you're seeing there. And we're doing a backup of 100 gigabyte storage volume using Oracle Cloud infrastructure. And that backup has completed. While the, while the disk storage volume was attached to an, a running live running VM. So I didn't have to power it off or shut it down or anything. He says, while it's up and running, take a snapshot, less than four minutes for my backup to complete. That storage volume actually on Oracle Cloud infrastructure, uh, the backup of it's gonna cost me around one pound 74 pounds per month uh, and less than four minutes. What's the point here? Let's go back down memory lane. In 1986, it would take us eight hours of a night shift to produce all the mag tapes. Today, I can um, back up the same volume of data in under 15 minutes. But actually, that one just took me four minutes. The reason it's 15 minutes is I might want to take a copy of that backup storage volume and move it to a different region to give me regional resilience. The reason our backups um, in the tape drive would take us eight hours is we produced two sets. And on the following morning after the night shift, somebody would take a copy of those backup sets in a fireproof and waterproof box down to the local bank and would deposit it in the bank safe to make sure that it was secure. Don't need to do any of that anymore. Time's moved on. I no longer mount reel-to-reel -reel tape drives on a tape drive. Um, my backups, I don't even use a button to do them. They're all automated and scheduled. Cloud is a set of solutions to some common computing problems. And by solving these problems, we can create opportunities. This is a quote from an article that I wrote just a couple of years ago in uh, the Oracle UK user group scene magazine. And you can grab the URL there. Um, and uh, that's a link directly to the article. It's still on the internet, page 28, and you'll see my write-up in which I describe PeopleSoft in the cloud. And I go, this, this, this um, session today is not to go, in, to go into details of what is cloud, but I just wanted to highlight the four things that I call out in this um, paper on what I consider to be cloud. And the first thing is, is I have access to unlimited compute resource. I have access to subscription pricing, you know, I don't, don't have to buy all my hardware up front. I can pay as you go. And uh, automation plays a key role in what constitutes cloud. Um, and, and a thing that I've added, uh, which I'm going to talk about more today that I don't really cover much in my article, is the availability of native cloud services and how they can help us in the PeopleSoft world in, in running uh, and managing our PeopleSoft systems. What are the triggers for moving to public cloud? I don't know. What are your drivers for moving to public cloud? Is your hardware aging? Does it not perform very well? Are you struggling to find resources to, you know, human resources to help maintain that hardware? Do the disk drives keep breaking? Are they not fast enough? It, that you're in a perpetual cycle of maybe upgrading firmware on those uh, disk controllers or um, you know, patching your hypervisor if you're in a virtualized environment and then you're patching your operating systems. Are you looking to improve security? Can, can anybody just walk into your data center? What kind of level of security you have on your systems really is irrelevant if someone can walk into your building, pick up a disk drive and walk out. Um, and are you looking to Im improve availability? So there's all sorts of reasons which would cause someone to consider moving to public cloud. So public, cloud and PeopleSoft. What does it offer me? Is it better? So let's just look at some of the mechanics of what PeopleSoft in the cloud might look like. So we have our on-premises data center and it might be physically on your premises. It might be on some hosted data center somewhere else in your country or even in somewhere else in the world. But the point is here, it's, it's a physical data center. You've got physical machines in there. It might be virtualized on top of that, but it's your data center. In that data center, you're going to have some kind of firewall, some networking, some computer hardware and storage. On that hardware, you'll run an operating system, Windows or Linux. Um, you'll have some kind of operating system management tools, and there'll be a database platform which you're running on the operating system, whether that's Oracle or SQL Server. 
Uh, and then you have your installation of PeopleSoft again on that operating system and you'll have some client tools. Maybe, maybe not in the data center, maybe they're on your local machines or maybe you RDP into virtual machines in the data center to access client tools like App Designer or SQL Server Management Studio or SQL Developer. So what, oh, you, you might be running all of that on a virtualized platform. You may not be. You might be running PeopleSoft on four or five big computers, uh, you know, sitting in the corner of someone's office uh, and there's no virtualization at all. What does this look like in public cloud? What does it look like in Oracle's cloud? Well, it looks like this, except you don't have any virtualization platform. That's kind of delivered as part of the service of running people, uh, of running your applications in the cloud. Um, but of course, you still have a network, you still have a firewall, you still have hardware, you just see it as virtualized hardware, and you still have storage. There's an operating system, you still have to manage that. Um, uh, you still have a database platform running in that operating system that you still have to manage, and you still have PeopleSoft. Really, what is the difference? Well, fundamentally, there really isn't much difference. You know, some would buy the T-shirt that says, uh, you know, cloud infrastructure, just somebody else's hardware. Uh, well, that is kind of true, but there are some big differences. The first one is you have access to unlimited hardware, unlimited compute. You want another 10 servers because you're planning an upgrade to 858 and you want to try it out. You don't have to go and buy that hardware, find space for it. It's unlimited. Um, it's a subscription uh, based service. So you only pay for what you use. Um, you stop using those 858 servers because you finished your trial, delete them, you stop paying for them. Um, and I'm going to come back to automation a bit later on. There is some automation you will get intrinsically by moving to Oracle Cloud. There's some that you don't. Um, let's talk about native cloud services. Uh, I've just boxed the database as a service. I'll, I'll talk a little, a little bit about this later, but um, PeopleSoft currently is not certified on Oracle's database as a service. I was at Oracle Open World Conference last year in uh, San Francisco, and I heard there that it's on the roadmap, it's coming, and it's probably coming soon. Uh, but the autonomous database has been available for quite some time now in the Oracle space. And if you're running PeopleSoft on Oracle, this is a compelling reason to, to migrate to um, Oracle Public Cloud. Uh, that will that will I hope be available soon from Oracle for PeopleSoft customers. But there are other cloud um, services that are available that we could use in our PeopleSoft estate: file system services, email services, integration services, load balancers, and I'll talk a bit about some of those later. Let's do a quick demo. Let's um, let's look at a PeopleSoft system running in Oracle Cloud infrastructure, and let's perform an automated clone of that system. Now I'm gonna use uh, a product that some of you may have heard of. Uh, it's a, if you're licensing PeopleSoft today, then you have access to this product. It's called PeopleSoft Cloud Manager. And this is an instance of PeopleSoft Cloud Manager uh, running in Oracle Cloud. And I, I, I've recorded the video because using videos, I can speed up time. This is Accelerating time is not a feature of Oracle Cloud infrastructure, um, but uh, we only have a limited amount of time to talk today, so I've just recorded it so we can speed up time. So let me go into my list of environments that are running, and you'll see here that I have one HCM Image34 system that's running, and I'm going to go into the clone environment option. This particular environment has one Linux machine running a full stack, it's a very simple system. It's just it's a demo system. And I have one Windows client that is running my change assistant and app designer. And I'm going to clone that whole environment. So I've just gone through and acknowledged. I've given it a new name. There we go. Start my timer again. Um, we're five seconds into our operation. The cloning process is happening behind the scenes. We'll just accelerate time here. Now, what's happening behind the scenes here is native Oracle cloud infrastructure features are being used in order to create the virtual machines. So behind the scenes, Terraform is actually being used to do that. And native uh, compute storage cloning is being used. 
Now, a really neat thing about the OCI storage cloning is it's near real time. You, as soon as you say, I want a clone of this storage, that storage volume becomes available pretty much immediately. Now, it might take a, a few minutes for it to, to get up to optimal speed, but it will be available pretty much immediately. And you can see our little uh, demo there has finished and we've clocked just over 17 minutes to clone the whole environment. The creation of the VMs and the creation of the storage volumes was actually a very fast part of that. The rest of it was running scripts inside PeopleSoft in order to make it a distinct and unique environment that we can then go and log into. So let me go and do that. I'm just going to switch to a virtual machine that I have running here, which has access to my cloud infrastructure space. And here's the name of our clone. Uh, HR dev one clone, and I'm just going to go and log into this system. And there we are. It's kind of proving this was the video was, called, was, was recorded two days ago, and this the system is uh, still operational. I can log into it. We'll leave that opening. We'll just flip back to our our presentation. I didn't have to go and provision hardware for that clone. Um, I have access to pretty much unlimited compute and storage capability with, uh, capacity within Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. So let's just go back and talk what limited scalability looks like. So I'm going to describe what most people's data centers look like, not all, but most data centers. And that those data centers will be made up of computer hardware and storage. So let's make a machine. So here's a machine. It's got 12 CPUs, 64 gig of memory. And let's build some virtual machines in there, each one having four gig, uh, four, four CPUs and 12 gig. So we can create three of those. And we've just used up 12 CPUs of our virtualized host. Um, that's OK. Virtualization can cope with that. We spin up another three machines. Now I'm using 24 CPUs, but I've only got 12 physical CPUs, that's okay. Virtualization can cope with that. So far, I'm not really overloading my physical machine. I create another three servers, each with four CPUs. If they all go busy now, I'm kind of in trouble. Um, and I'm starting to maybe get a performance hit as the hypervisor of the virtualization system has to start sharing um, CPUs between these uh, nine um, virtual machines. Can I squeeze more into my virtualized platform? Sure I can, but you see my storage down here uh, is already at 90% utilization. So if I go and create another three virtual machines, even if I can physically fit them into my hypervisor, um, I can't, I've got no storage left to store the virtual machines. So I've, I've got an impossible situation here. How do I solve that? Well, the only way to solve it in a data center is to create more storage buy some more storage and buy some more hardware. How long will that take you to do? Well, if you weren't expecting the demand, that could take you weeks, even months to implement that. If you were expecting the demand and you were prepared for it and you knew weeks and months in advance that you were gonna have this demand, then you could have got the hardware in place and the storage in place and be ready for it. So I've just bought another server with another 12 CPUs, another 64 gig of memory, and now I can move my overloaded hypervi uh, hypervisor machines into that new server. Um, got a load of space there that I'm not really using, and I'm paying for it, but it's there. Now, this is the reality of most people's data centers. It's limited scalability. You can scale, but it's limited. It's limited in their physical machines and they've got limited capacity. You can keep extending those, so it's limited by time. Another way of describing this, I don't remember this guy, uh, Scotty, the character from Star Trek. James Doohan is the, uh, was the actor and he's famous for being asked by Captain Kirk to get more out of the warp drive engines on the Starship Enterprise and famous for saying, she cannot take any more, Captain. Well, I'm sure many of us who are responsible for data centers uh, will have had to say that to our customers. These hypervisors cannot take any more, Captain. Um, that is the reality of, of many uh, PeopleSoft's customers that, that I work with. So what does this look like on Oracle Cloud Infrastructure? Well, we have on-demand scalability. Uh, this is our 
set up as we had before, but nothing's read anymore because I've got access to unlimited CPUs and unlimited amount of memory and storage. Um, here and here, storage and compute capacity is unlimited. It's not infinite, but it's as far as I need for managing even the largest PeopleSoft estates in the world, it has sufficient capacity to on demand respond to my needs. Cyril Northcote Parkinson was uh, an English historian and author in the last uh, century and very famous for writing uh, Parkinson's uh, Laws, uh, the Pursuit of Progress book. One of his most famous laws was that work expands so as to fill the time available for its completion. Someone, um, if you have a two hour task to do and someone gives you 10 hours to do it in, you know what, you might take 10 hours. That's just human nature. And this is what he observed in industrial England in that part and, and in politics as well. Uh, this applies to cloud computing. If you have an unlimited amount of compute resource available to you, then it's likely uh, that your servers will expand to fill cloud space available. Uh, so this is a warning. Uh, it's not inevitable, but it is a warning that if you uh, realize that you have unlimited compute resource and you don't control it, you don't apply good governance and control to it, that as soon as your developers find out they can spin up machines at the whim of a, you know, a touch of a button that they'll be doing it and you'll start paying for it. And before you know it, you'll end up with hundreds of machines and a big bill at the end of each month. So what is the cost to running a server? A server consumes CPU memory. We've seen that it requires an operating system. You've got to maintain and configure that operating system. You've got to patch it regularly. You've got to monitor it. Is the, is the operating system still up and running? It might break. The hardware on cloud won't break, but, but your server so software might break. Um, so, you know, ideally, let's get rid of the server. You know, where we can, let's go serverless for a PeopleSoft installation. How can we do that in Oracle cloud infrastructure? Well, what cloud services do Oracle offer that could help us? Straight away, file system services. Um, if you spin up a latest uh, image of Cloud Manager 10 in Oracle cloud infrastructure, it now uses native cloud file system storage for its repository. Well, there's nothing stopping you really from using that repository for PS Home uh, or, or App Home uh, for a file attachment store, for file attachments into uh, journals or purchase orders. Um, you can use it as your administrative DPK library and any number of things. The point here is you have a file system now with no operating system, N no, no server hardware to worry about, no server operating system environment to worry about, nothing to patch, nothing to maintain, nothing to, to really monitor um, other than is my, is my cloud provider providing me with this service um, and there's very high service level availabilities on file systems. That's very, very um, beneficial thing to have available to us with running PeopleSoft in the cloud. Another one might be um, SMTP and mail services. Um, many customers I know run PeopleSoft to have a dedicated server running an SMTP gateway that handles electronic mail outbound from PeopleSoft and inbound. Well, it's another operating system to maintain. So. Uh, cloud services inside Oracle Cloud Infrastructure provides um, SMTP forwarding and email services both in and out and sophisticated filtering and forwarding, all without needing a server to maintain. Load balancer service is an obvious one, really. You've got multiple PeopleSoft web servers. You want a front end to that. You could take a virtual machine, install some load balancer software on it and make that your load balancer, but then you've got another machine to maintain uh, and a machine that costs you. You pay for a running virtual machine in cloud infrastructure. Firewalls and edge networking to give you increased security are services that uh, OCI can provide you and, and some native systems monitoring alerting services. Integration services, um, recent versions of PeopleSoft, People Tools 858, uh, now comes with very tight integration with Twilio. Uh, not an Oracle cloud service, but Twilio is an external cloud service for messaging SMS message, tex sending text messages to your PeopleSoft customers or your PeopleSoft users. Uh, well, Oracle also has an integration service. 
that will allow you to integrate with other systems uh, if you choose not to do that natively within PeopleSoft. And then, of course, the obvious one, which we've already demoed, backup and recovery services. Um, let's have a quick look at load balancer in OCI. What that, what might that look like? So let me switch to my Oracle Cloud infrastructure dashboard here. Um, I've gone into one of my compartments in um, o OCI, and I've got a, a load balancer already running. Now I'm going to just walk us through the steps of how to create a load balancer. We've already got our clone that we've just created. Um, I want to expose that to the outside world. Currently is sitting inside a secure subnet. Let me go and create a load balancer and put that out into the public internet. So just create the click the create load balancer button. Is this going to be public? Yes, it is. Um, uh, uh, what size of uh, uh, um, Capacity, do I need this load balancer to be? I'm just going to pick small one here. I choose the virtual cloud network that this is going to sit in and the subnet that it's going to sit in. Um, what algorithm do I want the load balancer to use? Well, I've actually only got one web server here, so I'm just going to choose weighted round robin. And now I choose the back end. So this is which PeopleSoft web server is this going to attach to? Well, here's my HR Dev One clone that I created earlier. So let me just select that. And the back end is actually listening on port 8000. That's the HTTP port it's listening on. So let me just update that. And let's click next. Now I could implement HTTPS here, just for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to choose HTTP. And my listener on the outside world is going to be the standard default port 80. Now, some advanced options. Um, I could specify a, time, a timeout here. Let me uh, submit this, and it will go ahead and create my load balancer. Nothing to install, no service to provision. Away it goes and creates my load balancer. It just takes a few minutes. It's going to come, come back, and it's going to give me a public IP. I will then bind that public IP in a public DNS entry. I'm not going to go through do that in this session. It just takes a little bit too long. It's just a few minutes, but I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'm going to go back and show you one I've already created. So here's, here's a load balancer that I created just this morning, in fact. It has a public IP of, of that. Uh, could please go ahead and try it if you want. You won't get into PeopleSoft because it's got a domain name uh, auth that it's requiring. Um, uh, I've got all sorts of reporting metrics. It's monitoring it for me. I've got a host name already bound to that uh, yatra 20cedarrights.com uh, which I can now use to log into that virtual machine, that um, running. There we go. Using the yatra 20cedarrights.com URL, I can now log in to my PeopleSoft system going through a load balancer. And it load balancers, it's as simple as that. It's another native service within OCI that you can use to provision, um, get some value uh, for running PeopleSoft in the cloud. Let's go back to our presentation. What are some of the potential pitfalls for running PeopleSoft in the cloud? Well, we've already talked about uncontrolled server growth. Make sure you manage that and have good governance and controls in place for it. Um, automation of PeopleSoft is not automatic. If you move PeopleSoft into uh, any cloud infrastructure, even Oracle cloud infrastructure, you still have people tools to maintain. You still have um, your, your database to patch and maintain. You still have operating systems to patch and maintain. Now, Oracle cloud can provide you with native services for server patching. Uh, and our, an OCI does that. It has very, very good um, frameworks for allowing you to automatically uh, monitor the patches on Linux and Windows and update those and apply them if necessary in an automated fashion. But PeopleSoft itself doesn't get automated when you move it into um, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure or any anyone's cloud infrastructure for that matter. However, we do have some really good tools within PeopleTools that allows us to orchestrate some automation. So we have DPKs, deployment packages, and ACM, which is automated configuration management. Now, these have been around for years within people tools. Um, and you don't need to migrate PeopleSoft to cloud 
in order to utilize those tools. If you're an installer of PeopleSoft today in a hypervisor in your data center, you're probably you're going to be using DPK. You may well have gone on to use ACM as well for configuring things like your report nodes and Elastic and uh, indexes and so on and so forth. So there's nothing stopping you today, uh, any PeopleSoft customer, from automating some of the things around PeopleSoft maintenance and management using DPK and ACM. It's just, you have to build the orchestration. Now, Oracle have already done a large part of that for us in the form of PeopleSoft Cloud Manager. Now, Cloud Manager only runs on OCI. It doesn't run on any other cloud platform. It only runs on Oracle Cloud. If you're licensing PeopleSoft today, you it's free to you to, to set that up and install it. But of course, when you install it and set it up in OCI, you start paying for the compute and storage resources that it uses. Um, using Oracle Cloud Manager, we can do some really interesting things with a PeopleSoft instance. We'll come back and look at some of those in a moment. What are some of the other pitfalls and challenges? Integrations is a big challenge. Imagine we have our on-premises data center on the left, our PeopleSoft now in the cloud, Oracle Cloud on the right, and we've got some on-premises apps that we need to integrate with PeopleSoft. I need to create a pipe, some kind of connectivity between these two data centers. One is a cloud data center, one is our own data center. Well, you know what? Data center to data center integration, that's nothing new. Network and hardware engineers have been working on that one for years. Uh, and Oracle has some, uh, some, some uh, very viable solutions to help that connect connectivity. So I have to create some kind of pipe between our two data centers through which maybe my app designer and, and PeopleSoft developers will connect. Or, or maybe we allow them to connect to remote desktop machines that are running in Oracle Cloud just to speed things up there. Uh, after all, that is where PUM might be based, and it's probably better to have your PUM tools and client tools close to your PeopleSoft database. Uh, the on-premises apps will integrate those via that pipe as well, but we might start to overload that, so we might need to go to a bigger bandwidth pipe. Um, then is the, the story of external systems. How do we how do we uh, solve that problem? Do we bring our external third-party systems through into our data center and then into PeopleSoft? Uh, running in the cloud, or do we do direct into cloud? You know, this session is not about solutions to that, but just to say this is one of the challenges, the integration challenge. So PeopleSoft in the cloud. So what does it offer me? Is it better? Well, for me, as a manager of PeopleSoft in my organization, it gives me better data security and resilience. It gives me better performance and reliability. It gives me pay-as-you-go uh, pricing. When I'm finished using a machine for development, I delete it, I stop paying for it. If I delete a machine in VMware or Zen or any other hypervisor, I'm still paying for the hardware that that was running on. I have greater visibility of costs and a much, much improved uh, agility with on-demand scalability and on-demand compute resources. Um, I have access to cloud services, so I'm able to reduce my number of servers. And we use the load balancer, we use file storage and SMTP and emailing services within OCI. Putting PeopleSoft in the cloud, how? This session isn't about how, uh, but just a quick word on how. Certainly revisit your PeopleSoft architecture. You may not make any changes, you may not have to make any changes. You may decide to defer some changes till you're more stable in that cloud, but certainly take a look. Automation is key to gaining value and definitely take a look at PeopleSoft Cloud Manager. Even if you're running PeopleSoft in Amazon or Azure or some other cloud, take a look at PeopleSoft Cloud Manager. Uh, it's a no brainer for spinning up your PUM, PIs, uh, demo instances, development, and maybe test systems. So, uh, I said I'd talk a bit more about Cloud Manager. Let me do that just now. Um, it's Oracle Cloud only. You can provision whole PeopleSoft environments in it according to defined topologies. You can apply people tools patches, upgrade whole people tools versions, and clone environments in it. Let's do a quick demo. We have another recorded one. Here's our clone that we created earlier. So what I'm going to do now is go into the details of this clone clone and we're just going to check out that it really did build and just refreshing the metadata within cloud manager to see that there's a there's a database there's a peoplesoft client there's a web and there's an app server 
I'm going to go to the Apply People Tools Patch menu option, and I'm going to select the patch version I want to upgrade to. In this instance, the latest 85804 patch. I'm going to click Update. It says, are you sure? Yes, I really am sure. And off it goes. Um, the screen doesn't go blank. That is me just, whoops, sorry, I've just skipped the uh, video there. That's me just accelerating time again in order to just speed up this demo. So yes, we want to apply the patch. And there we are, it's completed. Now, I've sped up time significantly there. It actually took 47 minutes. Now that's 47 minutes to get hold of the DPKs for the latest patch, um, apply those into my Windows workstation, get the workstation up to the latest version of Change Assistant and App Designer tools, connect up to my database, apply, uh, update my PS Home, uh, apply all the scripts necessary for people to patch upgrade to the database, redeploy all the peer app domains and uh, process scheduling domains and start everything back up again. Um, let's go and prove that this really is done. We'll just continue our demo here. We'll log into that system. This is literally seconds after I'd applied the update, sign into it. Uh, we'll see our fluid homepage for manager self-service. We'll do a control J or alt J, I find is more useful uh, these days in fluid. And the alt J should confirm that yes, our current tools release is 85804. So there's a real time um, live demo of patching a PeopleSoft environment up to that level. Now, I actually have this here with me, live prop. Uh, if you've been around long enough in the PeopleSoft uh, world as an installer, you'll remember these. They are binders for holding uh, CDs. And this is what you would install your PeopleSoft system with. Uh, I keep mine, uh, they have videos of my wedding and my kids uh, burnt and backed up onto, DV, onto DVD now, uh, but I still have the folders. You know, trip down memory lane, we used to use those to install PeopleSoft. Now I use Cloud Manager. And Cedar Consulting within version one, we have over 40 instances of PeopleSoft running campus solutions, HCM, financials, ELM, Interaction Hub, for all different customers and projects, demos that we do, um, load testing that we do, and all of them are created uh, using Cloud Manager. It's completely transformed how we manage um, our PeopleSoft estate. Is it better? Well, you know what it is for me? Um, I get on-demand scalability. I use cl native cloud services to reduce my uh, effort and costs, and I have significantly greater uh, improved cost visibility and, and management and I get very consistent and reliable performance. And if you start to compare OCI with other cloud offerings, that's not what I'm doing today, but if you do compare them, you'll notice some very significant performance differences uh, with OCI. Is it cheaper? Well, yes, it is cheaper. Well, sometimes not. Just watch out for your server growth. I don't know if it's cheaper. I don't know how much yours costs, but is it cheaper than what? You know, can I spin up the latest palm image in under one hour? Yes, you can. Can I apply the latest people tools patch system in under one hour? Yes, you can. Both of those will save you money. So yes, it is cheaper. Can I back up a 200 gig storage volume under 10 minutes? If your backups take six hours and you can now do them in 10 minutes, it's cheaper. Uh, will I pay for electricity, lighting, cooling in my data center because I've moved PeopleSoft to the cloud? Maybe not. Maybe your data center is running non-PeopleSoft apps. And just because you've moved PeopleSoft, doesn't mean you can dispense with your data center. So there's data center, it's complex. Will it cost me to rip out my decommission my aircon and power units that I used for my data center? Well, yes, it will. If you're getting rid of your data center because you're moving everything to cloud, there's a cost to decommissioning. Will I save on renting floor space in your machine room? Well, if you don't have a machine room anymore, you might still end up paying for that floor space, but you can redeploy it. Um, and numerous other questions. The point I want to make here is producing a uh, the, the financial benefit, the, the total cost of ownership and the cost of migration. It's a complex thing. And so make sure you work with professionals who've done this before, who've got experience of this, who can help guide you through the, uh, the maze of, of working out the costs. Um, Oracle have an online cost estimator. So if you're just interested to know compute and storage network costs, you can do that with their cost estimator. 
other costs. You've got to get to cloud. It's not just about run costs. You might have some redesign, you've got to reinstall PeopleSoft in the cloud. You've got to you know, re-engineer re maybe some of your integrations or at least repoint them to a new IP address or domain name. Um, you've got investment in automation. You might decide in your move to cloud, you'll do no automation and still gain value. You might decide that this is a good catalyst for deciding, you know, I'm gonna utilize YAML files and DPK and I'm gonna fully automate the deployment of my domains. There's a cost to doing that. And you may decide you want to move people off to the cloud. You're not in the business of running data centers. So you'll give it to somebody else to do. So you might uh, bring in the expertise from a trusted partner to help you manage the infrastructure side of, of this. There is still infrastructure to manage. It's just, you're not managing the hardware anymore. You're still managing operating systems and security, and you're still managing WebLogic and Tuxedo, for example. And there are some licensing implications on some cloud platforms. Um, if you get into comparing the costs of running Oracle database on OCI versus running Oracle database on some other cloud platform, you might be surprised. Who do you believe? Uh, Marco Minardi, who's the Gartner Research Director, uh, is quoted as saying, public cloud providers make their offerings look significantly more cost-effective than on-premises data centers. Of course they do. They're selling cloud services. Hardware vendors, on the other hand, promote the opposite view. Of course they do. They lose business if you go to cloud. Who do you believe? Well, uh, this is a quote from L Larry Ellison. He's one of the providers, of course, but he says most people don't believe that Oracle has the fastest cloud and the lowest cost cloud. But when you come here and try it, that's exactly what you find. So no, don't, don't believe the hype. Go and try it. Spin up some of your instances in Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. Try it out. See for yourself. Do a proof of concept um, and just see how fast uh, and how much it might cost you. So in summary, PeopleSoft in the cloud, is it better? Is it cheaper? You know, I can't possibly answer that question for you. I don't know what you have. I don't know how much it costs you. But don't forget, PeopleSoft in the cloud it's not SaaS. It's your instance of PeopleSoft. It's your on-premises PeopleSoft licenses. You're just running on public cloud infrastructure. It's your data. Uh, you are still responsible for managing it. Um, you could take advantage of native cloud services and you could invest in automation. Uh, but don't forget, you'd have access to unlimited resources. That's a positive, uh, but you do have to manage it. And you may want to work with a trusted uh, cloud partner, someone who's done this before, who's got experience of working with cloud and has got lots of experience of running PeopleSoft in cloud. So why Oracle Cloud? Well, Oracle Cloud for PeopleSoft is a natural choice because Cloud Manager, because OCI offers predictable performance, because Oracle database support. If you're running Rack and you want to run Rack in cloud, Oracle's your only choice. Um, I've mentioned database licensing. It may well cost you more to run the same Oracle database in someone else's cloud than it does in Oracle. Um, the company I work for, version one, has a dedicated licensing team that can help customers navigate the complexities of licensing. And we're expert in that area. If you need help, just give us a call. PeopleSoft certification on Oracle Cloud Autonomous Database is planned, so I'm told by Oracle in a public forum at Oracle Open World. When that will be, I do not know, but maybe it will be soon. I hope it will be soon. Um, Oracle Autonomous Database will give you pay-as-you-go licensing. It will give you on-demand auto-scaling. Now I've seen this live. Um, I've seen a live Oracle database ramp up from, from eight CPUs to 16 CPUs without bringing it down, without any loss of service. And if you're in an environment where maybe you're a university and during registration, your utilization of PeopleSoft goes through the roof, or maybe you're a HR system and at payroll time, you have thousands, maybe tens of thousands of your employees logging in to PeopleSoft to check their pay slips on, on payday. And you end up with this massive surge in demand. Um, wouldn't it be nice to be able to allocate a few more CPUs to your database to cope with that demand? Uh, and maybe also ramp up, a automate the ramp up of a few more web servers um, attached to a few more app servers at the same time, and then just get rid of those when, the, when your load's finished. 
um, only pay for them when you use them. So keep your eye out for autonomous database certification coming for PeopleSoft. I don't know when, I hope soon, but that will be a real game changer for PeopleSoft customers wanting to run in the cloud. Just calling out a few useful resources, don't need to take note of this, this presentation is going to be available to, for download. Um, the peoplesoftinfo.com portal will take you through to people, more information on Cloud Manager. That will take you through to a link on how to install cloud and configure Cloud Manager in OCI and some introductions to OCI itself. Just want to call out a little bug here. Um, uh, half, about halfway down the guided um, uh, learning library, it tells you to log into Cloud Manager instance. Well, actually, there's nothing to log into until you've installed it. So you have to install it first, then you can log into it. So just flip around those two, two steps. Um, how do you get to that uh, gu guided walkthrough? Well, go to peoplesoftinfo.com. There's a link, install Cloud Manager tutorials. That will take you there. Uh, I blog myself, not as often as I'd like to, but um, I've blogged most recently about Cloud Manager 10 and some of the really cool features in there. Um, and a good friend of mine, Dan Iverson from PS Admin IO, he has a very good uh, video walkthrough um, on installing Cloud Manager in OCI. Uh, he's a fellow ACE direct, uh, ACE, uh, uh, with me in the community as well, prolific sharer of his, uh, his knowledge. Can version one help? I work for version one. We're a specialist uh, cloud services provider, specialist in the PeopleSoft realm as well. We have customers running PeopleSoft in Oracle and in Azure and AWS. Most recently brought a customer live on OCI um, and we managed PeopleSoft instances for over 15 customers now. Um, we are, like I say, we have a dedicated licensing team. So if you need any help, you want to talk through any strategy or migration plans, or you're already in the cloud, but you are having some struggles uh, and just want to consult with some, some trusted experts, then please feel free to reach out to us. So that is me done. Um, that's my email address. You can contact me directly on there. Um, it's been a pleasure to address you today. I think we may have a few minutes left. If there are any questions, I'd be happy to try and answer them. Yes, Graham. Uh, there are question and answer uh, section. Uh, you can take a question and answer from there. Okay. I just got to try and work out how to work the system yeah. to see the questions now. Yeah. Can you see the Q&A section? I can't at the moment. Uh, and then you present, uh, then it will be automatically up here. Hmm. Okay, yeah. Oh, okay. I think I found the questions. Yeah, so first question, any application can be hosted on any public cloud infrastructure like Amazon, Oracle, et cetera. What are the advantages a customer gets if it plans to host PeopleSoft on OCI than AWS? There you go. That's why Oracle. It's a natural place for PeopleSoft customers to go to. And it's especially if you're running Oracle database. Um, the, the prospects of having autonomous database certified against people tools is just too good to be true. Um, o o OCI, you might want to do some benchmarks yourself between the performance of uh, PeopleSoft on OCI, especially if you're on Oracle database. And like I say, there are some rack and some licensing implications as well. Um, we run PeopleSoft in, we have customers who run PeopleSoft in Azure. I know customers who run it in AWS. They're not bad choices. Uh, there may be reasons why your company goes down those 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 routes, and and that's fine. Um, but but there are some benefits for PeopleSoft customers. Cloud Manager would be one of those as well. So is cloud migration option available only for higher version of PeopleSoft? You can run any version of PeopleSoft 
in the cloud as long as you can spin up a certified operating system platform. So, for example, in Oracle OCI, you can create Linux 7 instances of operating system. You can't spin up, uh, I don't think you can spin up Linux 6. So if your version of people tools isn't certified on Linux 7, then you, you might have problems moving it. But then you know what, 855, 855, 856, and they're not certified by Oracle anyway. So, um, but yes, it, you know, if you can run PeopleSoft on a certified platform, then, then yes, you can. Um, uh, and I guess, let, let me talk about SQL Server. If you're running PeopleSoft on SQL Server, then you can spin up a Windows machine in Oracle Cloud Infrastructure on which you can install SQL Server. Well, that's no different to um, you know, what, what uh, Amazon or Azure or your own data center virtualization um, would, would offer you. Uh, and you can run SQL Server, in, um, you can run SQL Server in OCI. Um, partial migration to cloud possible. Yes. Uh, I don't know what bits of it you would move and which you wouldn't. Like, I wouldn't necessarily recommend moving your web servers to cloud, but not your app servers. You want those fairly close together. And likewise, your app and your database servers, you'd want quite close together. Um, an interesting partnership between Microsoft and Oracle recently, uh, allowing uh, customers to directly connect at the back end of their um, Azure and Microsoft Azure and Oracle OCI data centers very, very high speed interconnectivity. So you might run your Oracle database in OCI, but your PeopleSoft stack in Azure. But you'd have to have some very, very strong reasons to do that, I think. Uh, and uh, I don't think the connectivity between the two is cheap. Um, ar around a year or two, Oracle introduced Oracle Saw. Does, is it useful for PeopleSoft cloud migration? Um, I'm not sure it is particularly useful. I don't have a great uh, le um, level experience in SOAR, but if you're migrating PeopleSoft to any cloud, what you're gonna do is spin up a bunch of servers in that cloud and you're gonna reinstall PeopleSoft. Now, reinstalling PeopleSoft using DPK and, and um, YAML, you know, using, using your own configured YAML files, it's fairly straightforward stuff. Um, now, do you actually want to physically lift your virtual machine and all of its configuration out and try and squeeze that through Oracle SOAR into, I, I don't know that there's, I, you may have some value in that, I don't know. But moving PeopleSoft to cloud itself is, is just spin up some VMs, install PeopleSoft, configure it as you would normally on premises. Um, can we use integration tool like Dell BOMI or Oracle Integration Cloud Service to connect on-prem. So, uh, yeah, you can certainly connect on-prem systems to uh, Oracle's uh, Integration Cloud Service. Yes, you can definitely do that. I don't know about the Dell uh, BOMI. Um, I'm not familiar with that. Uh, can we pay the licensing for both PeopleSoft and DB instances in OCI, or is it only app cost? So um, right now, today, uh, from a licensing point of view, you have to bring all your licenses with you to, to cloud. So if you have an Oracle database license for on-prem, you will just take that to Oracle Cloud. Uh, soon, I hope, when autonomous database, database as a service, uh, becomes available to PeopleSoft, then you might be able to revisit that. Um, can we have a link available for step-by-step -step technical document for lift and shift on-premises PeopleSoft application to OCI using PeopleSoft Cloud Manager? Yes, you can. I've just given those in the presentation. Um, and you know, I highly recommend joining up with the PS Admin IO community. They have a Slack channel, um, lots of um, people like yourselves asking similar questions on there and you know, learning OCI, learning Cloud Manager. Uh, it's a great community to, to join in with. Uh, can I get access to the database if we install PeopleSoft in OCI? Uh, I presume that means, can I access the database from my on-premises uh, data center? Uh, yes, you can. Um, a, a lot of our consultants, in fact, 
most of our developers uh, run application designer on their local machines inside a hypervisor because that gives us security um, and we do direct connect to databases in OCI. We obviously implement security, but uh, yes, you can do it. Does it perform as well? Just going over the public internet? Well, it's adequate. Um, does it perform better if you have Oracle Cloud to data center high-speed connectivity in place? Yes, it will. We would still recommend for PUM change assistant that you run those as close as possible to the database if you're doing selective adoption. If client has PeopleSoft implemented on-prem DB2 database, can it be migrated to OCI? You know what? I don't know the answer to that question. Um, but I'm more than happy to go and find out and try and post back some, some feedback if I, if I can. I, I look out on my blog, I'll, I'll, I'll feed back on that, DB2 on OCI. But don't forget, if you can install DB2 in Linux or you can install DB2 on Windows and you can spin up Linux and Windows in OCI, you can probably install DB2 on it. But you know, it's just a virtual machine, right? Uh, thank okay. you, Graham Smith. Yeah. Uh, thank you for your time and support. Uh, that was a really insightful session on PeopleSoft. Uh, participants can see uh, Twitter handle of uh, Graham Smith. And uh, if any doubts, uh, they can directly connect with you. Uh, also LinkedIn and also uh, participants can follow the blog spot. So that's really good, very good. That's great. Thank you very much for attending. Uh, it's been my pleasure to speak with you. And I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference. Namaste. Yeah, yeah thank you. We have a few announcements here. Uh, we are reminding again uh, to all participants about our Learn and Win program. Uh, you can win uh, AIOG membership and other benefits. Uh, attend more sessions and earn more points. Uh, now you have earned 60 points after attending this session. So we have four types of recognition and we have uh, OG Yatra base. You can uh, use this for your LinkedIn and Twitter and also provide a uh, participate certificate. So as promised, uh, here are exciting agenda for 4th July, uh, means a tomorrow's session. We are covering two hands-on lab, uh, talk on building community and talk on the Oracle Ace on their lessons learned during the, their career and journey. So uh, meet with Oracle gurus uh, tomorrow. Uh, we have exciting uh, sessions tomorrow. Again, one more announcement. Uh, it's a kind reminder to all of you that must register for kit session. Kids will learn robotics on live webinar. Uh, this is on 12th July. This is one of the popular program part of our OG Yatra. We teach robotics and uh, please watch our website for more details and register yourself. So continuing your conversation in Twitter, this is the only way you can connect with people virtually. The presentation material will be available after Yatra. Uh, you need to access the access to AIG portal. Uh, speaker feedback, this is very important. Please spend one, two minutes of your valuable time and provide your feedback. This will help us a lot to bring more session like this. Uh, with that, thank you, Graham Smith, uh, for your continued support. And thank you, everyone, for attending the session. We have next session line up in 30 minutes. So take a quick break and have a tea, coffee, and join again an exciting session. Thank you very much.